What's going on growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey. It's mid-August and the summer heat is still here. The intense sun can make it tough to start and grow some of your veggies in the summer, but I have a way to fix that. That's what I want to share with you today. Let's go! Growing and transplanting things like lettuces and brassicas at this time of the year can be frustrating with how intense the sun is. And some people just choose not to grow things like lettuces until early September or something because the sun is just so strong. But I'm here to tell you that there's another option. What we're going to do is retrofit our hinged hoop house that we built, I think it was last fall, so that we can use it and make a simple yet effective shade covering. Before I take the plastic off this hoop house, you'll notice this is a double layered hinged hoop house and each layer of plastic will bring me up essentially one and a half zones. So so I'm in zone 7A with these two layers. I'll basically move up to zone 10A. That's the idea with this. All I'm gonna do is take the plastic off and add some shade cloth and turn it into a shade covering. Anyone could do this, it's very simple. You don't already have to have this hinged hoop house made. So I'm gonna show you two ways to do it. The first thing we're going to do is just take off all the plastic. What I did was I used screws and this furring strip right here. This way we could easily just disassemble it. So we're gonna do that first. There we go, that's that last piece we got off. Now I'm just gonna take the plastic off, but it looks like it looks like Tuck is out around digging holes or something. Hey Tuck, are you digging some holes, boyo? He's got the dirt face. This guy likes to get his uh, face dirty while I like to get my hands dirty. So we're kind of a nice crew, little combination, dirty face, dirty hands. He's just relishing it out here. The sun's going in and out, so when the sun's in the shade, he's kind of just coming out and showing his beautiful little face. Look at the smile on this guy. He's a garden vet. He's been gardening for about eight or nine years now. He's 10 years old, but he's been gardening for a while, so he's probably been gardening a lot longer than some of you, so you guys got a lot of lessons to learn from this guy. He can teach them all. He's taught me a heck of a lot, right, Boyle? So throw some hearts down in the comment if you love seeing this guy and you love seeing the sun open up and shine on his beautiful face, right, Boyle? He's a good guy. So I got this strip off, now I'm just gonna take the plastic off, and I'm gonna save this plastic to reuse it. So we're just gonna Remove this first layer of plastic. I'm gonna leave it out to dry. But next what we're gonna do is the, if you wanna just build a very simple version that's not hinged, I'm just gonna pull all these out on the corners and then I have them screwed in. So what we're gonna do is just take, go around, take all the edges off and pull the caps off too. I got all the caps off, now I'm just gonna pocket all of them and I've got the screws too. And you'll see what I'm gonna do next. I'm just gonna take this shell off and it's already made. And what I'm gonna do is bring that to my raised bed. And one of these little things popped out but this is really easy just to knock right back in. So we're gonna bring this whole shell here and the caps over to the raised bed right now. Now I'm over at the bed that I'm going to be building the shade covering for. And just a few weeks ago, there was a lot of tomatoes planted in here. I decided to pull some of them out so I could get these things in. I had one nice variety of tomato in here that I had never grown before, a determinate variety, a mushroom basket tomato. I'm gonna to put a couple pictures on here that I had posted onto Instagram. But what we're gonna first do is take our caps that we had, that we took off the other thing, and we're gonna place all these caps Four of them on the corners and then one from in the center. So it's going to be like this here and then all in the corners as well. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is pre-drilling a hole in the corner so that we could screw this cap right into this corner. I'll bring you close and show you. So you want to make sure you're pre-drilling but I already have pre-drilled this section, pre-drilled that section right there. Then what I'm going to do is take screws. I've got inch and five eighths screws. These are decking screws, exterior screws. And I'm going to, I already have a, a uh, hole drilled at the bottom of this cap. And I'm just going to take this cap and I'll screw it into the corner. I'll put links for everything I'm using in the video. This way, if you guys want to build the same thing, you can. Then we're just going to screw that down relatively tight like that. We're going to go around and screw the other five in as well. Now, we're just going to take this frame in and it's convenient that it's so light. I can do it on my own try to squeeze our way through here. When you have a food forest, it's like, it's fun trying to move things through. So what we're gonna do is just bring this right into the section we need it. Just gonna try to do it on my own. I'm gonna start with this center one, just push it in, work my way along this edge.
And if you want to see the dimensions and how I built this, you can just go to the hinge tube house video. I didn't feel like I needed to redo the whole thing again. So this whole hinge tube house, it's a, uh, it's multifunctional. That's one of the big things in permaculture where you don't want to just use one thing for one function. When you can get multiple functions out of a certain thing, that's the value. We don't just use fences. We grow food up them. We don't just use this for extending the season on the backside of the fall by being able to grow things late into the winter. The idea this year also is to use a shade cloth so I can start some of my, my fall things earlier. This way we're growing late into the fall, but also some of that stuff earlier in the season, extending the season on both sides. Let me grab the shade cloth now. Let's grab our shade cloth and start getting that on. So what I'm going to be using is 40% shade cloth. When it comes to shade cloth and the percentage, it basically just is saying how much percentage of the sun that it's blocking. So if you've got a 40% shade cloth, it's blocking 40% of the sun. When you're growing veggies, you want a shade cloth typically between about 30 and 50%. You don't want higher than 50% shade because it's going to negatively affect your plants. But this is going to be perfect for like a lot of my lettuces at this time of the year and some of my brassicas transplanting and just uh, you know, helping it through that kind of shock that can happen. So I'm going to take the shade cloth, open it, open it up and drape it over the top and then show you how I'm going to tie it down a little bit. I got this on Amazon too. I'll just leave the links if you guys want to grab the same one. You can grab, you can get green ones too, but this is one that I found that was 40%. It looked good and it got to me pretty quick. I would have loved to do this a couple weeks ago, but I just, I didn't think of it till now. So this will be perfect for as much of the year as I can use it now and even next year too. We'll just open this up. And I got, you'll notice the size that was in the front, about six and a half foot, I think it was by 10 foot. Cause I think this is going to be an ideal size for this bed. So as you can see, it fits pretty nice. I didn't want the sides open. I want them, I mean, I didn't want the sides closed. I want the sides open like this. This way we can get a nice breeze moving through. The shade cloth is on, but it's blowing in the wind a little bit. So I'm going to tie it down. What I will do is take these hooks. I'm going to screw them into the side. Then I'm going to take these little bungees that came with the, uh, the netting, the shade cloth. I'm just going to take this and put it through here. I'm not exactly sure if this is how they work. And then I'm going to put that in and just attach it right here with the hook. So we could just go like that. So we're gonna pre-drill and put these hooks in first. I have the other hook in. It's gonna put this one on relatively tight. Then what we're gonna do is take this and when I pull uh, this bungee, I'm gonna make sure that I'm on the plastic up here, on the PVC pipe. I don't wanna be down here on the wood because I don't wanna damage this shade cloth. So I'll make sure I'm on the plastic there. I'll pull this down and just put it on that hook right there. Same thing on the other side. This makes it super easy, makes it relatively tight. It won't blow around too much. And then we'll still get a good amount of airflow through the center. If it happens that like it's cloudy on and off and I wanna come out and just take this off, it's very, it's gonna be super easy to just go like this, go like this, and then just take it right back off. So super easy to do. Now I'm gonna show you how you can do it also with the hinge tube house. This way it's a little bit different and a little more functional maybe. It looks like Tuck's a little tired right now. We were out here earlier today, playing and running around before it got too hot out. He's got his whole dog right underneath the apple tree and underneath the shiso. It's, I just love seeing him like that, hanging out underneath the plants. So we're gonna work on this next part of the build. Next, we're gonna move over to the other part of the hinge tube house that we haven't taken apart yet. I'm just gonna go around, remove the furring strips and then just take the plastic off like I did for the other one. There we go, that should be the last screw. Now we're just going to remove this. And this is more to show you if you only have the one layered hoop house like I have right here. And I need to take some of these clips off. I do have these clips on that I'm using. I'll, set, I'll put a link in the description for these little plastic clips that help a lot. So we're gonna move this, remove this plastic. So we can reuse again. And then for this right here, in my opinion, there's no point of taking this off and, and then screwing it back on somewhere else. We're just gonna take this whole unit, pick it up and lay it on top of the raised bed. Now let's bring this in, dance our way through the forest. Try not to hit anything. It's still pretty light because it's, it's really just a two by four that bear all the weight. Now getting it on here might be fun. Lay it on edge and then rotate myself out underneath it. Would it be easier with two people? Yeah, definitely, but probably wouldn't be as fun either. 
So I built most of my beds the same size, so there's a sense of uniformity. So we can just put that on top like that. And then we'll take that shade covering and drape it right over the top. I still have my hinges on the back too, so we can put those hinges on. And then once it starts getting cooler out, we can remove the, sh remove the shade covering back off and then put our plastic back on. Now I'm just gonna put this hinge on. It's a little bit of an old hinge, but it'll work. Pre-drill. Now I'm just gonna get these screws in. Put one more screw in and we'll, then we'll do the same thing on the other side. We have the hinges on now, so it's uh, workable. You can just open and close it if you want. And you'll notice the top is just a little bit bigger than the other one, but that's fine. It still rests just as good as it needs to. Now we're going to take the shade cloth and drape it over the top like I did for the other one. And it was easier doing it the first time, but that's all right, we'll still get it. So we're just gonna drape this over on this side and then we're gonna drape the cloth over on this side. Now, there's one or two things you could do. You could either use the uh, bungee, like I did, to strip it down, or you could take this furring strip, like we did for the plastic hoop house. You could lay this out, put the furring strip on, and just screw right through this. That would be a really simple method. This way, when you open and close, it's easier. But in my opinion, this doesn't make as much sense because for me, I only want the shade covering to be on the garden for certain parts of the hottest part of the day. So I don't need it on here all day, every day. Using those bungees on the side will make it really easy to me to just take it on and off. This might be more ideal in a section if you live in Southern California or Texas or somewhere like Arizona, where it's just scorching hot for most of the day. So you need to use the shade cloth. What I would do if I wanted to use a hinged method is I would put the hinges probably on that side too because the south is over here. This way I could open it up and let some of that south sun in if I need more direct sunlight. So the method I'm going to go with is the, is the bungee one, but this could be a real simple, easy, effective way that you don't have to come out and unbungee everything. You can just open it up if you want. I screwed this furring strip down on both sides. I've got the final screw that I'm going to put in. And again, I'm making sure I screw through this thicker plastic right here. So we're just gonna screw this final one in. Now as you step back, you'll notice we've got this furring strip here on both sides. Now we can open and close this. And then just use a shade cloth like that. Then we can just stick this stick in here if we wanted to open it up to get more sun. And this really doesn't catch wind as bad as something like the plastic one does because the wind can move, th move through the shade cloth a little bit. But again, I'm on the wrong side. If I was going to do this and actually use this method, I would make sure that the hinges are on this side. But to me, going back to what I said, that elastic method makes it so much easier because I can just take off the shade cloth whenever I want and put it back on. It just seems simple to me. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. If you live in a really hot area, I hope you try to extend your season by growing on the front half just a little bit more with something like the shade cloth here. It can make a big difference. It's simple, it's effective, and it's pretty cheap. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share it with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. And whenever you're on Amazon, don't forget to start your shopping with our Amazon affiliate link. Tuck wasn't in this video that much because I tried to keep it focused on the shade cloth build, but he's under there hanging out, enjoying himself. And you know, just getting the most out of the day or trying to. He's laying over by the shiso right there. And he's got another section of his hole dug, so it looks like he expanded it in width, not so much in depth this time. But again, uh, he lo loves being on the video, so hit the like button, hit the uh, subscribe button, and share it with your friends if you guys love seeing Tuck in the videos. So James and Tuck will be back to you again real soon. We 